Hello and welcome to the Fat Boss Guide to Immersius 10 Man Normal in the Siege of Ogrimmar. Hello! And it's nice to be making guides again. It is. It's nice to be back. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to be in a new tier. Yes, it's a very good tier so far. For this encounter you'll want two tanks, two to three healers and a mixture of ranged and melee DPS. It doesn't really matter too much on what your composition is. Mm -hmm. So let's get straight into it. Immersius is a two phase fight and to start off we're going to talk about his main phase. Now in the main phase there's kind of four main things you really need to worry about in this phase. It's like four main abilities. The first of which is Shard Bolt. Now basically this forms pulls under every single player's feet and you just need to move out of it. It does tick quite hard um, so really you just got to make sure your raid is fairly spread out not too spread out because otherwise you'll be out of range of healers and all that sort of stuff. You just don't want multiple pulls to spawn under the same people so just make sure you're not stacked on each other and when it does spawn move out of it and these spawn relatively frequently so you do need to move quite a lot another ability you'll see throughout this phase is seeping shah now these are just things that will like just before they spawn you'll see them as like blacky purple circles that are moving around on the ground and after a couple of seconds they'll activate and they'll sort of like spray water up in the air if you get hit by these you get knocked up in the air it's very very frustrating they hit quite hard as well so just try and avoid them don't get hit the main real ability in this phase is Swirl, and basically the boss will face one direction after a short cast. He'll then start sweeping like a corner of the room with like this giant frontal tidal wave. It looks pretty cool. If you do get hit by it, you'll be knocked up, but it pretty much does like no damage. It does like 30 odd K damage, so it's nothing really to worry about. It's just a huge inconvenience. So if it does decide to point in the direction of everyone, you could all try to move or you could kind of just take it. It is the first boss, so there isn't a lot of damage going out anyway, so you should be alright, but um, yeah, you can just avoid it, because he does face that direction, and then after a cast, he starts sweeping the room, so th that's something you might want to take into account, but really, it's quite a... it doesn't do a lot of damage, so you should be fine. That's something that the tanks need to worry about. His his um, main ability for the tanks is Corrosive Blast. Now this is a frontal cone ability that he'll do at his main threat target, so the tank. So make sure that you're all by yourself because it does a bunch of shadow damage. So you've got to make sure you have your DR up for that. And it increases the amount of shadow damage you take by 300% for 45 seconds. And it does stack. So if you're not tanking, make sure you're not in front of him because otherwise you're going to take a shit ton of damage from this. And you pretty much just want to taunt on one. So once the one tank's got the stack, you can just taunt straight back off him and just switch on that one stack because otherwise you're pretty much going to die from that ability so nothing too difficult. Now once the boss hits 0% HP he will then go into his second phase called the split phase. Now before we talk about the split phase we need to talk about the boss's energy bar which shows his corruption. Um, the boss will be defeated when you clear out all 100 corruption so 100% of his energy yeah. and you can only do this during the split phase. So in the split phase, the boss will despawn and will split into like 25 little globs that will spawn randomly on the outside of the room. And when they do eventually spawn, they'll start moving towards the boss. If they reach the boss, he will keep one corruption energy, so you need to stop as many blobs as possible from reaching the boss in order to reduce the amount of corruption he will have when he goes back into the normal phase. Now there are two different types of blob, there's a Shah Puddle and a Contaminated Puddle. Now the Shah Blobs are like the Black Blobs and you will need to kill these ones, these are the one for your DPS. Now when you do actually kill these, they will explode and give a 25 DPS buff to anyone who's in within 10 yards of the actual mob itself. Um, but this damage increase only applies to the blobs, so when you come back to the boss, it would have dropped anyway because it doesn't last very long, or it would be up like for a couple more seconds, but it doesn't actually apply to the boss anyway. If you kill the black mob before it reaches the middle of the room, it will remove one shard corruption from the boss, so 1% of the boss's energy HP, if you want to call it that. Now the contaminated blobs are the blue blobs that you get on the floor. Now these need to be healed up before they reach the boss. The higher their HP is, so like the more that you've healed them, the slower that they will move as well. So it is worth like AoE healing and um, like hots and stuff, they're not a bad idea. Now once you have healed one of these to full, it will give anyone within 12 yards 25% of your mana back, and it increases the amount of healing you do by 75% and this stacks as well so if you can insta heal up one blob they haven't got a huge amount of health and um, so if you do heal it up very very quickly while standing near it you'll have a much easier time healing all the other blobs as well so that is something you might want to take into account now the blue blob will then hit the middle of the room and despawn and um, and if it is on full health and you've done all you uh, done your job properly this will remove one corruption from the boss's uh, corruption bar for when he comes back now each time an ad reaches the boss either a blue or a black blob um, unless the, the blue blob is completely healed up to full. It will deal about 75k damage to the raid and it will also damage any uh, blue blobs that haven't yet reached the boss because they're already being healed up but they're not 100%. Which isn't really going to happen anyway, like most of the time they would have already hit the boss or you would have already healed them up to 100%. But that's something to keep in mind anyway. So 
during this phase it's incredibly important that you do try and, and kill and heal as many as possible because if you let too many through not only is the boss going to take forever but you're all going to take a shit ton of damage and have to use cooldowns and stuff like that and it's stuff that you don't really need to do it's not stuff that you want to do now one thing to note is that when the boss does go into this split phase, you can actually see where the blobs are going to land, like what direction they're going in, because they kind of travel out from the middle of the room. So if you see, oh there's 80 going in one direction and none over here, you shouldn't probably stand where there are no mobs, you're going to go where like the biggest concentration of them are, um, and maybe send the tank to go deal with one or two or something like that. So it is worth adapting, it's not worth saying, no we're having five here and five here, when it could be that 20 of the uh, blobs are going to be on one side of the room. It is as random as that. Sometimes you get a completely blank side of the room. So do go on the fly there, but it is kind of good to kind of half assign people to the right places. Yeah. If you assign people to sort of rough areas, then that will probably help you out a lot. But you should try and be as flexible as possible when you are going to kill and heal up these blobs. So essentially in this phase, kill the black blobs, heal the blue blobs, try not to let as many through as possible. And if you do everything right and you manage to kill all the blobs and heal up all the blobs, the boss can lose up to 25 corruption, um, which is 25% of the boss's health. And really that's what you should be aiming for. I think we managed to do it once um, while we were doing it. So um, it's definitely possible. You just need to communicate and be ready to do it. So after the split phase, he will go back into the normal phase. Now, the thing is, he will spawn with the same percentage HP as his corruption. So say the boss, for instance, to make this nice and easy for us, say he starts with 100k HP or something. So after the split phase, you manage to take off 20 of his corruption. He'll then come back with 80k HP. So it goes like that, so it's in percentage things. So the the um, main phases get shorter and shorter as his corruption goes down because his max health is less. So um, it's really about just nailing down the split phases and making sure that you can get rid of all the blobs. And so to be honest, this, this boss is really quite simple. It shouldn't cause too much trouble for you. Yeah. So to wrap it up, it's a very, very simple fight. you just got to nail down the split phases. The better you, uh, you kill the blobs, the better job you do with them. Um, the quicker the fight will be and the easier it will be for you as well. But that's more or less it. It's a simple boss, but it's a nice one to start with. So thanks for watching guys. If this guide did help you out, then please do drop us a like. It helps us out quite a lot. And make sure to subscribe. And if you'd like to see any more of our Siege of Ogrimor guides, you can see them on the screen now. Just click on the annotations and that'll take you straight to those videos. Thanks for watching. Thank you.